Um, this was about um, how the Amazon forest, the life of our Earth, gets a portion, a huge portion of its nutrients from the Sahara Desert. So strong winds carry some of the sand in the desert, which ends up falling in the Amazon forest, nourishing it with nutrients like pho phosphorus contained in the sand. This was so amazing to me because think about how different the desert and the forests are. We think of them as almost pol polar opposites, right? Do we ever think about the desert nourishing the forest? No matter, so for me, what, what does this tell me? And the desert's so far away from the Amazon forest, right? So what does this tell me? No matter how far we think we are from each other and how different from the other, we are all very intimately interconnected. In spite of this, however, news regarding some people in the world uh, some parts of the world don't seem to be worthy, um, has been completely muted because we don't believe in our interconnectedness. Um, I was born and raised um, in Ethiopia. I'm of Eritrean descent. And there's currently a genocide in Ethiopia. Um, there is a civil war accompanied by a genocide. Um, the, it's an estimated 500,000 people have perished in the last 18 months in the northern state of Tigray. Seven million people are under siege. No food, no medicine, no internet, this whole entire time. Tens of thousands of Eritrean refugees are unaccounted for. The Washington Post writes, the world's deadliest war isn't in Ukraine, but in Ethiopia. So. Uh, David Volodsko writes in The Nation, if we compare the situation in Tigray to other ongoing armed conflicts, the numbers are startling. Looking at civilian deaths, for example, the war in Ukraine has resulted in less than 3,000 Ukrainian deaths according to the UN Human Rights Office, while Tigray has seen upwards of 500,000 as per estimates by Ghent University. However, how many of you have seen it in the news? Show of hands. Like three. <laughs> how many have you, of you have seen people changing their profile pictures to stand in solidarity with Tigrayans? Let's not forget that we are all so intimately connected. What happens over there will come to our door one way or another. When I started, speaking up about a genocide in Tigray, calling it a genocide. I got incessantly attacked and harassed online. But that was not the most difficult part for me. The most difficult part was seeing the silence, minimization, denial, and false equivalency by many Ethiopian and Eritrean intellectuals. Intellectuals, you would hope, would loudly condemn this in a united voice. It became really hard for me to speak to some of my own relatives or even longtime friends. It took me a long time to wrap my head around what's going on. I'm still extremely disturbed uh, seeing genocide denial in action. But what consoles me is that there will always come a time when you feel lonely if you stand in the right side of history. That's the whole point. If that wasn't the case, then there wouldn't be a need to speak up. You may find your community for collective action, but you might still find yourself lonely in terms of how whoever you consider to be your community acts. You might find yourselves at odds with everyone else in your quote unquote community at times. So a journalist and Nobel laureate Mar Maria Ressa said, you need to actually leave, live your values when it matters the most not when it's convenient. And the true test of your values is when you stand to lose something. No matter how beloved pop culture makes us think many historical figures we admire were, those who stood in the right side of history were often hated. Not so long ago, 2001, Representative Barbara Lee of Oakland, who I was just also told is a UC Berkeley alum, uh, was the only one 
out of 421 lawmakers to vote against the authorization for use of military force. She was the only dissenter in the Senate or the House, the only one. She called it, the, the, the reason she voted against it, she said, that it was a blank check to the president to attack anyone involved in the September 11 events anywhere in any country without regard to our nation's long-term foreign policy, economic, and national security interests, and without time limit. So she's sort of been vindicated because a lot of people now agree that this was not the right thing to do. But imagine how lonely she was at the time. One out of the only lawmaker out of 421. This never-ending war on terror that followed has claimed so many lives in the last two decades, especially those of Iraqis and Afghanis who suffer to this day. So Representative Barbara Lee recalled, recalled in a Radio Lab episode, it's like one of my favorite eps, uh, uh, podcasts, Radio Lab, <laughs> I gotta do a plug for them. Um, just a couple of years ago, she said in this episode, those attacks came and they came and they came, death threats. So I had to have security day and night. So again, remember that when you're on the right side, everything is gonna try to tell you that you're not, that you're wrong. The weight of the whole system is gonna try to make you silent. So thinking about all the horrors we're facing in the world, like some of the things I described here, might fill you with a lot of despair. But remember that there's always space for joy. <laughs>